All right, we're starting a new unit today, and uh, the unit is really going to primarily be uh, developing a skill that's pretty common in geometry courses, and it's uh, on writing proofs. And uh, we're going to lay some groundwork today. Uh, we're going to write proofs. I'm going to show you what that means. Um, today's proofs, as we just get started with this, uh, we're going to utilize some information that hopefully we're already pretty familiar with, so that's going to make our proof writing uh, a little bit easier. So we're going to gradually work into this skill and eventually uh, be justifying writing some proofs that are more geometric in nature using some uh, important information or, in other words, in some cases, proving uh, some things that are true using concepts that are not as familiar to us. So. Uh, today, hopefully, will be pretty basic. I hope you'll uh, really grasp uh, what we're going to do uh, in writing these proofs that are more algebraic in nature, and then we'll get a little bit deeper uh, over the next few lessons into more geometric uh, proof writing. So uh, let's get started. Um, we'll go to our next slide, and I'm going to make this uh, bigger for you. And I hope these are familiar. These are called properties of equality that uh, you probably touched on at some point in your math career. And uh, at least I hope so. But if not, um, we'll uh, hopefully uh, put some definitions to what these properties say and how they're used, how they're going to be used in our proof writing. So uh, the addition property says this, if we have two numbers A and B that equal each other, if A equals B, then we can add, as long as we add the same number to both, those two sums would be the same. That is the addition property in action. The subtraction property, of course, is very similar. If two numbers are the same, A equals B, two different numbers, then we can subtract a number from both. We apply these properties all the time when we solve algebraic equations, but maybe you've just never attached a name to them. The multiplication property says if A equals B, then A times C is equal to B times C. Division property, you can probably guess, if A is equal to B, then A divided by C is the same thing as B divided by C. All right, the distributive property we're pretty familiar with, I think. A is being multiplied times the quantity B plus C. If that's true, then AB is, is added to the product of AC. A basically gets multiplied times both of the terms. Substitution says if A equals B, then A may be replaced by B in any expression or equation. Okay, we'll look at that in a little bit. The reflexive property. Well, that's a fancy name really for saying if for any real number A, A is equal to A. A, a little note here below, a value will always equal itself. That's probably commonsensical, but we have an actual name for that property. It's a reflexive property. The symmetric property, see that word symmetry in there is the root, and it basically says if A is equal to B, then B is equal to A. We can switch the order of those two numbers if they are the same. And the transitive property is illustrated like this. If A is equal to B, and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. Okay, so I want to, I gave you an illustration really of how each of these properties work in our math problems. And now we'll just do a little exercise on looking at an expression and then um, write down the property that justifies the statement that's being made, okay? So this number one says if k equals three, then three equals k. That is an example of the symmetric property. <laughs> 
Okay, number two says if 2x equals 14, then x equals 7. So obviously we did division on both sides, so that's called the division property. 10y equals 10y, and you may recall from up here, we said that that is an example of the reflexive property. All right, if negative 5x minus 1 equals negative 11, then negative 5x equals negative 10. So we, to get from this statement to the next, we must have added 1 to both sides. So this is an example of the addition property. Number 5, if 10a equals 2b and 2b equals c, then 10a equals c. So maybe you recall that was our last property that we identified. That's called the transitive property. All right, moving right along. If negative 7 times the quantity n minus 4 is equal to negative 7n plus 28, what property is being illustrated here? And you probably recognized it. It's the distributive property. <coughs> if 6y is 24, then 6y minus 3 is equal to 24 minus 3. That's the subtraction property. So we subtracted 3 from both of those numbers on either side of the equation. Remember, these are called properties of equality. So we perform an action and we still have equality after the action is being performed. If 10x plus w is 41 and w is equal to 1, then 10x plus 1 is equal to 41. So notice we replaced w with 1 because we were told that they are equal to each other. And so this is called substitution. If 3x equals 2y and 2y equals z, then 3x equals z. We saw that earlier. Uh, that's the transitive property. If 7m equals 35, then 7m plus 4 is equal to 35 plus 4. Pretty obvious that that's the addition property. <laughs> If negative 2c equals 18, then 18 is equal to negative 2c. And we saw that earlier. That's the symmetric property. Kind of like they make mirror images some symmetry. You can, if you fold on, like in our shapes, if we have symmetry, we can fold on a line of symmetry. And these two parts would match each other at, uh, after you did the folding. Okay, uh, given 3x squared plus 1, if x equals 5, then 3 times 5 squared plus 1 is going to be equal. All we did, really, since we were told that x equals 5, we replaced x with 5, and that's what substitution tells us. If m equals 2 then 8m is equal to negative 16. That's the multiplication property. We multiplied by 8 on both sides. So 5x plus 8x is equal to x times the quantity 5 plus 8. Uh, that is the example of the distributive property. So all of these are important properties. We kind of take them for granted, I think, because we just go through the motions of solving equations. But when we're solving these equations in algebra, we're typically applying um, most, if not all, of these properties. And so this is a good refresher on what exactly mathematically are we doing, which properties are we applying, because we got to make sure that whatever we do, these are Again, properties of equality, we've got to maintain the left side equal to the right side whenever we uh, go through these processes of solving. And so today, um, we're going to use these in starting our proof writing. So let's first of all define what is a two-column proof. There are other kinds, 
but for us uh, we're going to stay with this format the, probably the most common format the two column proof is really as it says it's two columns the the statements are listed on the left side you could also call those steps and then the reasons that justify each of those statements are going to be listed on the right and what is it that we can use as reasons and we'll we'll dive into these uh, later um, we can use these properties as we talked about which we will do a lot today there are these things called postulates that we will develop more later uh, things that we know that are true mathematically and they don't need to be proven um, we have other things called axioms and we have theorems and you might be thinking well I don't know what those are but trust me by the time we finish proof writing uh, you will be exposed to what these are all about so I'll save the actual definitions for those for a later lesson today uh, our focus really is going to be using the properties that we just went over as the reasons for justifying each of the statements okay so here's a typical two column proof and again ours are going to be algebraic so I hope today is going to be pretty easy for you it's a good way to get started proof writing geometrically uh, can be a little bit of a challenge so I like the way this uh, curriculum kind of eases us into this process okay so you will always be when you're writing a proof you will always be given a statement and in this case we're given that 4x minus 1 is equal to 27 what we're supposed to prove is that x equals 7 and the reasons are going to be those properties that we just listed in the previous exercise okay so the given statement now the the statements are provided in this case again we're just kind of easing our way into proof writing but eventually we will be filling out all of this we will fill out the statements and the reasons for those statements when you fill out the statement side you always list the given information first and that's done so you'll you'll just write down what you were told is given and that's your reason just like they did here and now the next statement is provided for us we just have to give a reason for how did we get from statement one to statement two well apparently we can tell that one was added to both sides and so our reason is going to be the addition property of equality just says if you add the same number to both sides of an equation then you have an equal expression that results and then finally to get from two to three we have to give a reason and that's going to be the division property we divided by four on both sides and that is it that's number example number one all right uh, we'll try example number two uh, again um, they did this for us eventually we'll do this ourselves. we will always the first line of our statement will be the given and you just write in that it is given <coughs> we have to give a reason on how we got from one step one to step two so uh, from one to two it looks like we applied the uh, addition property um, again although I just noticed that uh, in this curriculum um, we look like looks like we have a, an error um, to go from one to two uh, we would not have subtracted two from both sides we should have added so I'm just going to do a little change here this should be seven to make it actually true so we're just going to detour a little bit from what uh, this curriculum is showing because there's an obvious mistake so um, we would say that this is the addition property
and then this should be negative 42. And to go from step two to step three, we would have applied the multiplication property of equality. You don't have to write of equality. I just, just trying to <laughs> drill in your mind that these are all properties that we do perform to make sure that we have equality um, all the way through as we work our way to a solution. All right, um, here we are, another given statement, and here's what we're supposed to prove. They filled in the statements for us, and you always start with the given statement. And then let's observe what happened from step one to step two. And uh, you probably recognize that that was an application of the distributive property. From step two to step three, what would we say is our justification for that? Um, it looks like they we have applied they have applied the subtraction property to get from two to three. They subtracted twenty seven from both sides, so we would say the subtraction property of equality. And then to get from step three to step four, uh, they had to have applied the division property of equality. All right, so working our way through some more examples uh, to get you ready for your assignment. Uh, here's our example number four. Once again, um, we're eventually going to get to where we're going to write in all the statements, but just kind of easing our way into this. So the first, uh, the given statement is provided, and then we just have to say, justify how we got from step one to step two. And it looks like um, we subtracted 6x from both sides. So that is an illustration of the subtraction property. All right, to go from step 2 to step 3, we added 17 to both sides of the equation. So that's the addition property. To go from step three to step four, we have to justify what happened there mathematically, and that's the division property. And then finally, <coughs> we have this, really it's the same equation, it's just turned around. So um, saying that 12 equals x is the same thing as saying x equals 12, and that's just the symmetric property. Oh, sorry, it's the reflexive symmetric. Sorry about that. Reflexive is if it just says A equals A or any number equals itself. Okay, so uh, number five, uh, getting a little longer. Uh, here's our given statement. And we have to prove this final answer, justifying, really. it's You can think of, and this will help you as we get into geometric proofs later, really just, these are just justifications on how we got from one step to the next. So from one to two, um, what property was, is being illustrated? And uh, hopefully you see that that's the distributive property. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, and let's see what happened from two to three. Um, negative seven x plus four x is negative three x. So do you notice um, these properties of equality involve, uh, we, we're doing something to really both sides of an equation to make them equal. Now, in this case, from two to three, all we did really was combine like terms. And so whenever that happens, uh, you're just gonna say simplify. And we simplified by combining like terms. Okay, now we move into actually performing a property of equality. We added or subtracted 12x 
from both sides of the equation. You see how we went from negative 3x to negative 15, so this is going to be the subtraction property of equality. And then from 4 to 5, let's see what happened. It uh, looks like we added 14 to both sides, so this is going to be the addition property. And then finally, uh, we got to our final x solution for x using division on both sides. All right, and uh, got a couple, a few more examples here. Do you notice now the the statements are not given? So now we're kind of on our own to uh, fill in everything, and this is more realistic with the type of proof writing that we be, we will be doing eventually when we get to geometric proofs later on. So the first thing you always do is put down what's given. That's always going to be a provided statement. And you basically have to outline detail how you got from here to here. And so we'll put given. Okay. Well, just think about what you normally would do to solve for x. And um, you would say, my next line would say 3x is equal to negative 15. And that's utilizing the subtraction property of equality. The next move would be dividing 3 on both sides, and that's actually going to get us to what we were supposed to prove, and that was utilizing the division property of equality. All right, and we have uh, this next proof. Uh, starting here with this statement, let's prove that x equals 4. So you always, you'll just write down whatever is given and state that it's given that will always be line number one in these two column proofs and then let's work our way through this uh, we need to remove grouping symbols so we're going to apply the distributive property of equality these two expressions are the same uh, I should be numbering. Sorry about that. Number our steps. All right, so step three, I'm going to add 18 to both sides of this, and that's going to give me 2x equals 8, and I'm going to state the reason for doing that. Mathematically is the addition property of equality. And then finally, I will divide by 2 on both sides, and we end up with what we we're supposed to prove, and this is the division property. Okay, so you're getting a good taste, probably an easy taste, of what proof writing is all about. And we got a few more here, and then this will wrap up our examples, and hopefully this will prepare you for your homework assignment. Okay, so uh, number eight, we'll put down our given statement. And state that it's given. And we have to justify how y equals three using properties of equality. Okay, so my next move will be to multiply two on both sides. And that's the multiplication property of equality. My next move would be to add 1 to both sides. Show the result. That's the addition property. And then finally, I would divide by 5 on both sides. And that's the division property of equality. Pretty simple. Uh, let's try number nine. <coughs> Looks like we're missing the line here. So uh, number one will always be just copying down the given statement. And state, that's your reason, it's given. And now we're going to work our way through 
how to prove that k is equal to 2 and justify the reasons behind that. So uh, the first thing we always want to do is put this variable on one side of the equation. So I'm going to change this into tw um, 8k. And that's applying the subtraction property. Then I'm going to get k by itself, so I need to add 4. And that's the addition property. And then finally, I will divide by 8. And I end up what with the result I was supposed to end up with, and that's the division property. All right, a couple more. Let's put down our given statement. Let's see if I numbered those. Yep. So our given statement is negative eight times the quantity w plus one. If that's true then prove that w equals 14. So here's my given statement, and now let's work through the final proof that w does equal 14, justifying our steps using properties of equality. All right, so first thing I will do is remove grouping symbols by using the distributive property. And then I want to put w's on one side only. I use the expression in algebra to kill the little one. Thinking about these two w terms, the smallest is negative 8w. So I'm going to add uh, 8w to both sides. And so that's an application of the addition property. And then once again, trying to get W by itself, I'm going to add 58 or 50 to both sides. Once again, that's again the addition property. And then finally, I get uh, 14 equals W division property. And I don't have an extra line here, but just so you can see, um, they want us to say w equals 14. So I can say that using the symmetric property. <coughs> okay, we got one more. Um, this is a long one, so let's write down our given statement. Um, I keep forgetting numbers, so... Statement number one, it'll always be given. Sometimes you'll have two given statements. Or you could have more. All right, that's given. And we're supposed to prove, using properties of equality, that x equals negative 9. So my first move here is to remove grouping symbols by performing the distributive property. So I'm distributing negative 2. Here I'm distributing negative 1. And so the justification for that step is distributive property. And then we should always look to combine like terms on a side. So 14 minus 16 is negative 2. So the left side becomes negative 2x minus 2. The right side becomes positive 2x plus 34. This is not a property of equality. This is just simplifying by combining like terms. So we'll just put simplify. Okay, and we want to get x terms on the same side, so I'm going to add 2x to both sides. So this is the addition property. Then I'm going to subtract 34 from both sides. 
subtraction property. And then finally, I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides. Division property. And I'm not sure this is really necessary, but um, I like to do it exactly the way that's shown. So I'm just going to turn that around and say that this is the symmetric property. <coughs> okay, I think that's all your notes examples. And so um, I hope this prepares you for uh, the homework assignment, which will be very similar to this. And um, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you next time.